Hello there and welcome. It's December uh, 19th and um, starting this live event here at myfibromyalgiarelief.com. Um, they're relatively new. We've been doing these for a number of weeks now. If there's a viewer out there, it's great. I'll see you showing up. But there is a question and answer uh, slot. And if you write a question, um, I'll be able to know that you're here and also be able to answer um, that question. This morning, um, what I'd like to talk about is using the ICE method for yourself. And I work with a lot of different people. And almost universally, I find it's easier to work with other people than it is for myself. Now, most of you are probably going to be working for yourself. So I hope this is going to be really useful for you. And there's a lot of theories about the conscious and the subconscious. And um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about those, but not necessarily saying things work that way, but in my experience they kind of show up that way. And my experience is this, that when I work on things that arise for myself that are not calm, there are many times <clears throat> that they don't clarify as quickly as they do when I'm working with someone else. For example, I was working with someone yesterday, uh, a couple days ago actually, and they were talking about having a, a big sinus headache and um, <clears throat> also then a migraine headache. And so we were just doing the ice method and the migraine piece of it went away and the person said, well, just the sinus is left. And I asked, so have you always had the sinus headache? Yeah, I've always had it. It came up right after I stopped drinking and I've had this sinus headache kind of ever since on and off. Well, as a person who uses the ice method all the time, I'm just always listening for those connections. And the connection right there was, he said, I've had it all the time. So in his mind, i had had it all the time. But what I heard him say was, no, really, haven't had it all the time. In fact, the sinus headache arose <clears throat> in conjunction with another event happening that he uh, chose to become sober, stop drinking. A big event, right? Huge emotions attached to that. And then... Um, sinus headache started. So for me, looking from the outside, that was easy to see, that it absolutely never occurred to him. Okay, <clears throat> Part of why I wanted to bring this up today and talk about this, one, is hopefully it'll be useful to you, but two, just I'm having this experience now where when I clamp down on my, my teeth, this jaw is giving me pain, and for the last couple of weeks, on and off, that's occurred. Very unusual for me. It normally doesn't happen very occasionally in the past, but now it's like every three, four days something, or sometimes every other week, I'll wake up, clench my jaws, and there's this pain there. Well, peptides can store on the body, in my understanding, in three different ways. One is, as a pure emotion, they're active right then and you feel them. Two, in the synapses in your brain, storing emotional memories of events from the past. In three various places in the body. That's why sometimes when things happen, you'll feel, oh, my gut tightens up, or my heart constricts, my chest constricts, my throat tightens, whatever it is. Okay? But in my case right now, there's this pain in my jaw when I, when I clench down. And other times, there's not. So I have a physical sensation that I feel, and I'm simply paying attention to it. And I want to talk about that in a little bit. I'm aware of that, but it hasn't gone away. Okay, I'm doing the ice method on it, but it hasn't gone away. What do you do when that happens for yourself? You know, something shows up, you use the ice method, it's still there. Okay, in a word, it's just to continue on playing the game of the ice method. I've never had it happen that things haven't loosened up. You know, like a, a knot that's really tight in a shoelace, if you just keep fiddling with it, just keep playing with it, eventually it loosens up. And so it is with the ice method. That if you just keep taking what presents, whatever it is that's not calm, in this case my jaw, and then you go out and you move into the calm space, identify the jaw, move out to the calm space, and exchange peptides, that at some point you start to loosen that knot and something else appears, you ice that, and it returns to calm, and a new level of freedom arises. So another example of this is a, 
I've actually had ringing in my ears the last couple of weeks as well. Again, very unusual. Um, but uh, another friend has this tinnitus issue that's been there for a long time. Showed me a paper <clears throat> on some recent findings about tinnitus, and so we started talking. And told him I've got a little bit of it going on now. He's had it for a long time. But what he said to me was, oh, yeah, the tinnitus appeared the same time that I started having some really severe digestive issues that he had to go to the doctor for and get medication and <clears throat> um, different things. And, again, standing outside and listening to that as a person who uses the ice method all the time, all the time, digestive issues, gut issues, often tied to emotions, emotions often tied to events in life, tinnitus increases, decreases with stress levels. Um, for some people. So I'm listening saying, wow, this is something where we could possibly identify something in life, go to the calm space, exchange peptides, and there might be a difference. May never have occurred to this person. Okay. So in the same way, with my ringing in the ears now for the last couple of weeks, and also with this jaw pain, my guess is there's something that's just never occurred to me. And that's just fine. I guess I want to let you know that that with me, that's just fine. I've used this ice method enough to have complete confidence in it. Complete confidence that if I just continue to use it, one, I'm calm, right, about this uh, sensation in my jaw, this pain when I clench down. And if I was worried about it, oh, what's going on? I can ice that become calm about that. This ringing in the ears, you know, when it first started, um, I was I would do the ice method and it would go away. And I was like, oh, okay, curious, what's there for me? And then one morning I woke up and used the ice method on it and it didn't go away. So then I could get worried, oh, is this going to be with me the rest of my life? Is it going to get worse and worse? All those kinds of things, right? But then the body goes into this mode of saying, what do I need to do, Lars, to help you um, deal with this? Because I, I clearly you're worried about this. And part of the energy of the body cells now goes into responding to my worry. But I can ice that and become calm about this ringing in my ears. So now I know that the state of my body is in a rest state and doing everything it can for my health. And then I can approach this tinnitus with a curiosity, this sound in my ears, this sensation in my jaw. Identify, calm, exchange. Okay, now I was, in, when I was back in graduate school in the lab I was working in, there was an explosion of an experiment. And for three days I couldn't hear anything. So I have some hearing damage in this ear. Um, I think it comes from that time. And one of the things about tinnitus, so it's good to know everything you can, right? Go to the doctor, find out whatever you can. Um, that <clears throat> that there is um, a, a, an idea that that uh, uh, an explosion can set off or a really loud noise can set off the beginning of tinnitus. It doesn't go away. So that's possible. But that's what happened. And it's just now coming into effect. But it's also known that Tinnitus seems to ebb and flow with rates of stress. I don't feel a lot of particular stress now. I just observe stress in my life, use the calm, the exchange process um, for whatever shows up. And jaws, you know, right? Clenching jaw, clenched jaws at night, right? Stress, maybe anger. Um, back in my childhood, gosh, I did. I had quite a bit of anger. I was a really charged, reactive kid. You know, one of the jobs that I took on in my family, I think, was to be the communicator in the family. My mom and dad didn't do a lot of communicating together. That's no secret. And um, I took on the role of, oh, I'll, I'll make sure that everybody gets the messages they need. But I think that inside of me, <clears throat> you know, that, that took its toll. And one of the outlets was I'd just get angry sometimes. I'd just My head would just throb and hurt. You know, I know sometimes often I took it out on my brother. He says he doesn't really remember that, but I remember taking that out on my brother. You know, for little tiny things, I'd get really angry at him, punch him in the shoulder when we were little kids. Okay, so that memory comes up. Anger, clenched jaw, ice. 
And over the past couple of weeks as it's come up, I'll just be playing around with these different things and then suddenly it'll go away. And my sense is that I've reconsolidated something. So what I want to do is I'll just show you this process um, on a couple of slides that I used in a presentation up in Canada. Um, and just, well, oh, hope that's going to work. That didn't look too good, did it? We may not be able to do this. Okay, it's just doing a, a regression on the screen, the screen that I wanted to show you here. I'm going to hesitate here just a moment. I'm going to try to get that screen over here. And this screen over here. And I can show it to you, but it just has to be in the Power, PowerPoint presentation. So um, instead of the full slide. Okay, so we're looking at it now. This is a picture of the synapse. Okay. My sense is that when I feel this clenched jaw, there's something stored as a memory or an experience um, that's not calm. And I'm taking it as, wow, there's information there. There's something there that can become calm. It can give me more freedom in my life. It may be a better feeling um, about my experiences. Okay, and so I use the ICE method for that. And what I want to show you um, is is uh, I guess it's this slide here okay use the ice method I identify what's going on in this case it's just a physical sensation the jaw the ear I move into the calm state I use a two-point process of moving into the calm state and then I exchange those peptides okay and all of that's um, at the the website myfibromyalgiarelief.com in order how to do that. So I think I'm not going to take the time for that right now. And then I'm going to show you this slide. That the things I'm looking for when I identify are an emotion, a memory, or a physical sensation. And the emotions are usually anger or fear or sadness. Okay, and so about this jaw, it's like, wow, jaw, anger, go back, look at that. And now I can feel in my stomach a little bit as I do that going back to my childhood. You know, and there's probably sadness about the reactions that I had um, and then how I took that out on my my brother when I'd hit him in the shoulder sometime or I'd go off, I'd get really angry and, you know, just be consumed by anger sometimes. So those are things that I will now ice, identify them, calm, and exchange. The sadness piece is something new. The stomach sensation is something new for me. Okay. In fact, I'm going to take you through the process right now of doing it. So if you want to, you can move into the calm state with me because I think I'm just going to ice that right now. So what I do is <clears throat> I've identified this sensation in the jaw, ringing in the ears, anger, sadness, all of those peptides, whatever's there, I don't even really have a good sense of it. Those are activated now. And that's that picture of that synapse in the brain. Um, this is known through the work of Candace Pert, Molecules of Emotion, Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief, The Science of Memory Reconsolidation. Okay, it's really, for me, useful to know that, wow, this is what's going on chemically as a process in my brain and in my body. And so I know that if I go out and change my consciousness, the chemistry in my body changes. And so now I'm going to observe a single point. Okay? And so we'll come back, and I'll come back to the screen share in a little bit. But I'm going to observe a single point. You can choose anything out there in your room or outside or whatever, and just observe that for a moment. I'm going to do that myself. And as I observe that with my conscious mind, because I'm observing something that's very simple, the chemistry of my body is changing. If I observed a tiger out there that was running at me, I would not be calm. I'd totally go into fight or flight mode and run away from this recording. But I'm observing a single simple point. The chemistry of my body changes, begins to relax. But I'm still looking at something out there, a particular thing, something to react to because I'm used to reacting to things. Okay. I'm used to reacting to my anger, 
used to reacting to my childhood, all kinds of things. Choose a second point. <clears throat> okay, I'm looking up at the corner of a picture in the wall over there. You observe that with your conscious mind. You're making a conscious intervention in whatever you just activated about your past or your present or your future worry. You're making this conscious intervention. Reacting to a single point. And when you've done that, and the body has calmed down because this is very simple, you can now do this step that um, is really a different thing. And that is that you can observe the space between these two points. The space that has nothing in it. And the thing about observing a space that has nothing in it is that you're now reacting, right? You're observing nothing, and so you're reacting to nothing. And the thing about reacting to nothing is that the body gets the message. Wow, there's nothing out there I have to pay attention to. And when the body gets that message, that there's nothing out there that I have to pay attention to, it naturally goes into a state of rest and restoration. There's nothing out there that needs a fight or flight response for. Nothing out there needs to concern itself within this very present moment. Notice that that's true for you. <clears throat> okay? If you're in that space, you're not worried about your long list of things to do today. You're not worried about all the things from yesterday or the worries or this or that. In this space, when you observe a space with nothing in it, the body says, well, there's nothing I need to be involved in. There's no danger out there. It moves into rest and restoration mode. Okay? I'm going to do that for myself. And that's the C part of ice. We identify. Now we calm. Now we're going to use this discovery of memory reconsolidation, <clears throat> which I call E, the exchanging of peptides. There's literally a chemistry that's produced now when my body is completely calm. When I'm observing nothing, when my fight or flight mechanism is turned off, I'm in rest and restoration mode, and there's a peptide chemistry that corresponds to that. And the science of memory reconsolidation says, wow, you can actually go back and you can replace the chemistry that's stored in the synapses of the brain, that picture that I showed you before, with a different chemistry. We activated the old memory, now we're replacing the emotional component with a different molecule. Molecule of calm. And so I'm going to go look back now at those things that I identified the jaw, the anger, the sadness, the tinnitus. And I'm going to see what's there. If you had an issue, calm space now, an issue that was active, go ahead, go back and check it out and be with you in just a second since I'm doing this process for myself right now. Well, that was interesting. The first time I clenched my jaw, I could still feel it. And then just as I began talking again, it went completely away. Slight twinge, but it's almost completely gone. Now it's completely gone except when I clenched really hard. The tone and the tinnitus changed. Still there. I can still feel the sound, hear the sound. But the tone changed. The emotion of anger and sadness are calmed down. And that feeling that kind of rose in my stomach and up into my chest is calm. Okay, so I actually now, in this moment here of making this video with you, have gone through a process where I brought peptide chemistry of calm back to some of the events of my early life and brought calm to them. And that's had a result on the way my jaw physically feels in this moment. Okay. Now what can often happen is, well, that, that actually literally is reconsolidating some of the synapses in my brain with different emotional chemistry. Therefore, I have a difficult, different response in my body because a different chemistry now is available to my body and I feel different. But there are trillions of synapses in the brain many, many different life experiences 
And so when something comes up that's not calm, I will ice it again. And a lot of times, instead of it going to like zero pain right away, you know, something different shows up. Like I actually have a different tone now in the sound that I'm hearing. Something different. Sometimes instead of um, the body calming, like the clenching jaw, well, then I felt, um, as I observed that, then I felt this tension in my stomach and my chest. And it might happen that after that's reconsolidated, well, gosh, then I feel something in my shoulders, headache, whatever. This is just a game to play about anything that's not calm. And once you learn to play the game, you're going to have calm as your default state. And when something shows up that's not calm, you get to play the game. And you get to get another area of your life, another area really of your brain real estate that's calm, which gives you more freedom because you're not living in reaction to those memories. You now have the memory still. The emotion is calm. You're now free to choose your action. Okay, so why I wanted to make this video, I'm really glad I got to kind of go through this process with you and show it, you know, kind of working in, in my life. But why I really wanted to do it is because it's often challenging to know what's going on in our own lives. The patterns that we establish, right, this is the subconscious piece, came from early on. We established patterns that said, oh, this is a safe thing to do and this is not safe. Go into a classroom and notice that for some kids, the safest thing is that they are constantly chattering and making noise. It's a safe thing for them. And other kids like myself, the safest thing to do is to be absolutely still in an environment like that where I didn't know what was going on. And in fact, being called on by the teacher, having to make a speech was a really stressful thing. And other kids got all their energy from that. Why? What was safe for me was different from what was safe for them. And all of us store, I believe, memories with peptides and emotions that help us to discern what's safe and unsafe in our childhood. But then we continue to use those patterns because they were built up for good reasons. They're stored in our bodies. We continue to use those patterns. Not only do they provide us the power to do the things we do, but they are also the constraints on what's not possible for us, what takes us out of our comfort range. It's going to be very difficult to do. A friend of mine uh, called Damon, Damon Sweeney, his name, he calls this the green zone, right? The safe area that's safe to do. And when you go out beyond the boundary of that, well, now you're in the yellow, and this takes some energy. And if you end up in the red zone, you're going to do everything you can to get back to the green. That's the stuff that's stored in the synapses of our brain. And that's something I just attended to by paying attention to this pain in the jaw. Using a memory reconsolidation process and finding out that some old anger and some old sadness may have been related to that. What's clear is that there's no pain right now. Okay? Now when I clench down really hard, I can still feel a little bit. So there's just more to pay attention to, more to play with. Does that guarantee that the pain's going to go away? No. I have no idea about that. But what I have discovered in playing with this is that in many, many cases, there actually is a connection between my stored emotional life and the stored emotional life of other people and the physical sensations that we feel in our body not a guarantee that this will go away or anything like that. But these are clues that if I follow them down, in many cases, a connection does show up between uh, emotional memory, the memories, the experiences in the mind, the emotions that I'm feeling in the present moment, and the physical sensations that I feel in my body. Okay. So when I use the ICE method with people, I'm just listening. And often it's easier for someone else to listen to us than it is for us to listen to ourselves. Because in my subconscious, I have this pattern of what's safe and what's not safe, and it puts me on an autopilot. Okay? And so when I'm starting to use the ICE method, I'm starting to take manual control of my life, and I just run on autopilot so much that 
when I do that, it's not always exactly clear, you know, what's in there. Okay. But I guess my word to you is that my experience with working with many people and with myself is that if we just continue to pay attention, to pay attention to what comes up and use the knowledge of, of how the brain works in terms of memory reconsolidation, emotions, um, creating chemistry, and then the chemistry of our body and our mind and its relationship through peptides, we can actually have a lot of impact in terms of taking away um, the reactivities. So in Damon Sweeney's terms, the green zone grows. What's safe grows for us. And I've certainly had this um, experience in my own life of, of my safe zone getting much larger than it was a couple of years ago. All right, so I think that's what I want to share with you, that when you're doing ice with yourself, um, my encouragement to just play the game, to enjoy it, to be patient with it, to allow yourself to be surprised by it, and to take what comes, and then use the ICE method. Identify, calm, and exchange. All right, hope this was helpful. Um, again, this is the live event on Thursday, December 19th. Uh, now it's holidays. I'll be back on uh, January 2nd, I believe it is, that Thursday, again at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time with our next live event. Lots more information at myfibromyalgiarelief.com, including um, a community of people who are using ICE and supporting each other um, in the process. So that will be helpful as issues come up for you. You know, don't really know what this is, but you can be part of this community. Uh, share experiences, learn from others, um, and have sort of the support of people who are saying, gosh, I'm using this in my life um, as a way for me to, um, to improve physical health, emotional health, and my well-being. All right, thanks a lot. Holiday wishes. Bye-bye.